What's up everyone, it is Fido from Self Taught Hustle back at it again. And today I will be showing you guys how to access a data that you retrieve from an API. Now, I wanted to say that we have received a very positive feedback on um, the videos that we did regarding just as to what an API is and how to work with an API uh, in the last week. So because of that, we'll be digging into more um, in terms of information regarding how to work with an API. And one of the key things that developers do when they work with APIs, and in particular when they are retrieving data specifically via a GET request into their application, is that they have to come to a decision point as to what they want to do with that data, right? There are several different things that the developer could do at the point where the data is retrieved to their application. Um, some that come to mind are that they render that data on a user interface somewhere, they store that data in a database, or they process that data in some sort of way not related to either of those uh, first two options. Uh, however, a developer can't do any of that unless the developer can first access that data, right? And uh, that's what we'll be starting out today is I'll show you guys how to access the data that you retrieve from an API via a GET request, right? So to start out, what we'll be looking at is a array here, a, J, uh, a JSON object, um, which is explicitly an array with a bunch of objects of posts, like a bunch of posts objects. Um, quite, quite literally, these are uh, the data representation of posts that you could see somewhere in a social network like Twitter, uh, for example, where uh, every post is tied to a specific user. In this case, uh, all of these posts are tied to a user with the ID of one and each post has a unique ID in and of uh, themselves. So you see ID three, ID four, etc. And there's also a title and body property uh, to each of these objects, right? So what we're gonna do today is that we're gonna retrieve this entire list and we are gonna render a couple of these posts, uh, access the data inside of them, and then render them on our user interface here in our application. So the first thing that we want to do uh, in order to execute such a goal is that we're going to come over here to our code. I'm going to shrink this guy down just a little bit. And um, we are going to specify very similar to our other uh, to our get request video is that we are going to specify the URL that uh, we want to go and get the data from, right? And in this case, this is uh, the JSON placeholder uh, URL here with the endpoint of a forward slash post. So we're gonna go ahead and copy it here, set it to a string data type, and um, then have that string data type be set to a variable by the name of URL. And then we wanna specify that we want to go and get the data via a method property set to a value of get, right? And then we're gonna go and use the fetch function to identify the address that we wanna go and get the data from and specify that we want to get the data, that we explicitly want to get that data via get request here in the options variable. So we pass those two, these two variables as parameters into the fetch function, right? Which effect, which effectively allows us to ping the API right here, right? And once the API is pinged, we want to go ahead and catch that response, right? Just like any of the other requests, we want to see what the API tells us, and that response is caught in a parameter. And to see the response, we console log it out into our application. And we're going to say response.json like this, right? So come here, go to the console, and we see that there is a promise and that the promise has been fulfilled and that we also have our array of data here, right? Which is really essentially what it's saying is, hey, look, this is the data you wanted to retrieve. It's right here. Um, it's it, it, This is a, a sign of success, that we have successfully pinged uh, the... Um, 
uh, the API. Now, the thing is that this is great that we, we've we successfully pinged the API, but we want to access the data, right? And we can't really access it in a functional way when it's caught uh, in this um, uh, in this promise object. I, I would like to say right, a promise object would probably be the best way to describe what I'm seeing right now. Um, so the way that we make it function ac accessible is uh, that we use another dot then. Um, so we use the dot operator and then the then function once more. And then we specify specifically a JSON parameter and then pass that parameter into an anonymous fat arrow function, which is just this uh, syntax there. And then we log that out uh, to the console, right? Now, the thing is, is that we will see an undefined here. And the reason why is because this dot then uh, it works in conjunction with the first dot then. And if the response dot JSON that's caught here is not uh, available be because it's contained within this console log, then the second dot then cannot function properly. Right. So all that means is that we want to expose this dot then this response dot JSON to this second dot then. Right. And the way that we do that is by uh, eliminating the console log. So we do that here. Okay. And then now all of a sudden we uh, we have successfully brought the entirety of this, essentially this this data that exists somewhere else in the network uh, by via this API is now brought into our application here, uh, hosted locally, right? So now we have, uh, as you can see here, if, let's, let's do a little bit of analysis. What we're seeing is what we're seeing uh, here in a bit of a summary is that uh, we have an array, right? And there is a bunch of little data structures contained in them, right? And because we know we're looking at the post endpoint, each of these data structures is a post in and of itself, right? So in order to be able to access the data contained within each of those uh, data structures, we have to think about how would, how, well, how do we access data that's contained within an array? Right. Well, if you guys know or if you didn't know or if you do, I will refresh you, which is that arrays are accessed by indexes. Right. And those indexes are addresses where the item contained in each of those indexes is stored. Right. So the zero index will always be this object. The one index will always be this object. The two index will always be this object. Right. So say that in our instance, we want to and you could see even see it here. Right. Zero, one, two. So say in our instance, since we want to get uh, the post with the ID of one. Well, the way that we do that is that this JSON here is an array itself, right? So how we access the one, uh, the post with the ID of one is that we use brackets here, and this is known as bracket notation, and we specify the index that we want to touch, right? And in this case, this is the index uh, zero, right? So we do that, we hit zero. We go back to the console and now you can see the post with the ID of one, right? If you say that we want to get uh, the post that is in the second index, uh, which in this case would be the index of one, you set it to one there and then you see now that we get the second post, right? With the ID of two. So in this case, we just want to get uh, the first index, right? And what we want to do is that we want to go a little bit further. We actually want to get uh, the body of the post and render it up here into our application. So we, we, we were in bracket notation, but now we're actually going to use the dot operator to access the body property in the object, right? So it's just a different way of accessing data, right? Because we initially used the index because that's how you access data that's contained within an array, which is a, a type of data structure. But in this case, we're going to use the dot operator because that is the best way to access data that is contained within an object, which is defined here by the curly brackets, right? So if it's smooth brackets, array. If it's curly brackets, it's an object, right? So let's say we want to access this body property here set to the value of Latin. I don't know, it's something in Latin. The way that we do that is that we say, okay, we've, we, we know the post that we want. And we want to access the body. So we quite simply use a dot operator. And then we then say body like this, right? We hit save. And then all of a sudden we can see we have access to the body, right? All this text here. And in fact, if we wanted to access the title, you just say here title. And now you have access to the title in Latin. At least I think that's Latin. So let's say that we go back to the body though. 
Okay, so now we have access to the body. The thing is, is that we wanna go ahead and render that here in this p tag in our application right so we effectively brought in the data into our application we access the data that was brought into our application and now we have come to a decision point of what we want to do with that data right and in this case what we want to do with that data is that we want to render it on the front end right so we want to render it onto our user interface here in our application and the way that we do that is that we, we're not going to log it to the console in this instance right we're going to uh access this p tag right and the way that we do that is that we're going to set up a variable right and we're going to set it to document dot get element uh i think we're going to do let's do query selector uh let's do document dot query selector and then p right so effectively what we did we what we did with the javascript here is that we said hey go javascript go to the markup right go to the markup and then get the tag of P. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fuse these two things. So we've we've accessed our markup and then we've accessed the data that we want. Now all we have to do is connect the two things, right? And we're gonna do it here contained within this uh, dot then function, right? So we're passing in the data here. And what, we're, what we wanna do is that we want to fuse this body text, the text that's contained within this body property and put it into this P tag. So what we're going to do is we're going to say p dot uh, inner HTML equals JSON body. Now we might get an error here. Um, let me see if this works. We definitely might get an error here, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it a shot. No, it's right there. Okay, cool. So that's that. So that so we did that. So we went ahead and we effectively. Um, we, we, we brought in that data and we effectively rendered it onto our user interface, right? So yeah, so that, that so that's how you do it. Um, and say that we were to, if we wanted to, for example, change uh, the text that gets rendered here, we don't want the body, we want the title. Okay, well, because we know that, that we're accessing that piece of data, we ha all we have to do is uh, refer to the property, the right property, and say title. And then all of a sudden you see the title here, right? So yeah, so that's just one of the things that you could do with the data that you collect from an API is that you could render it on uh, the interface and um, a little bit more deeply. That's how you access the data too, which is uh, just as important. But yeah, um, that was it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I appreciate you and I will see you next time.